Ska vi göra? Jag ska få lära mig korvstoppning. <laughs> Men nu ska vi få träffa Garrett Oliver som jag intervjuade här för någon vecka sedan. Han är en av ja, de största ölkännare för, för tillfället. Och han berättar lite hur man kombinerar mat och öl. Och just korv det ska vara en väldigt bra grej. Här får vi få honom. Oliver Garrett, welcome to Finland. Thanks. And welcome, Good to be here. Yeah, and welcome to our morning show. Excellent. It's an excellent time to drink beer. Isn't it, it is. <laughs> Breakfast of champions, that's what we call it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Any brunch of champions would be better. Okay, yeah. Um, back in the days, you used to, for example, be stage managing bands in London. And now you're one of the most uh, known beer experts in the world and you're a brewmaster of Brooklyn Brewery. How yeah. did that happen? Well, I think in back in the music days, we thought we were masters of beer, but uh, we didn't know very much about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm a guy who took the Ramones bowling, you know, that, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, we put on a lot of uh, fun concerts, but uh, while I was living in London and, uh, and enjoying uh, the, the, the music, I was also falling in love with uh, the traditional British beer, which is very different than the sort of mass market beer we had in the United States, which tasted like water. Mm -hmm. And so I went traveling around afterwards, and I went to Germany, I went to Belgium, I went to Czech Republic. And then I went back to the United States and I tried to drink this beer and I'm like, ugh, I can't drink this anymore. So I started making beer at home and that's how I got started. Okay, you started by making beer at home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and this it's almost like cooking. If you think about it, when someone becomes a, a chef eventually, well, of course they cooked at home first. Or if you become a, a football player or a baseball player, of course you played it, you know, when you were a kid. Well, the same thing happens with beer. I think that uh, these days, Instead of starting with an engineering degree or something like this, uh, people fall in love with beer and it becomes a passion. And now you have been in Finland for a few days. What, what, what do you think about Finnish beer? I think Finnish beer is really interesting. I'm particularly interested in Sakti because it's, a, it's a, such an old uh, tradition and uh, there are branches of this tradition that go throughout uh, this part of the world. And uh, still, even in a small way, uh, Finland uh, holds on to that. When, when it comes to Finland and beer drinking, we, we like to get wasted. That, that's, that's one thing. We, 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 uh, I've never heard that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but like tasting beer like an experience, I don't think too many people are familiar with that. How, could you I, I open think the world? Yeah, I think it's something that, uh, that is part in the United States is part of our resurgence and uh, new interest in cuisine. So when I was growing up, you had maybe one or two kinds of bread. You had only three kinds of cheese. You know, food was very simple, and it wasn't often very good. These days, you go into a place, and there's an entire wall of olive oil. There are aisles and aisles of 50, 100 different kinds of bread, you know, entire shops full of cheese. And so beer is just like that. We used to have every variety. Then, strangely, in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, we had nothing, one kind of beer for 300 million people mm -hmm. in the United States and now we're getting back our traditions and so in Europe uh, only in some areas they didn't lose their traditions I mean for example Germany and Belgium held on to their traditions but places like Scandinavia uh, you had prohibition just the same that we did in the United States and that's part of the reason why you ended up with a kind of industrial form of beer mm. and so you know when you drink these beers okay they uh, they're refreshing maybe but they don't have any flavor uh, and beer is supposed to have lots of flavor so that's one of the things that we're helping bring back good and now we have a few examples of uh, yeah what you make at Brooklyn brewery and uh, I also uh, brought some Finnish delicacies something that we excellent I'm getting hungry already <laughs> good so we have some two different kind of cheese we have sausages which is something Finns combine with beer drinking I yeah think. well we certainly yeah. do that at home too <laughs> maybe also in Germany and yeah. other countries uh, then we have salmon and or like salted salmon yeah. and uh, reindeer and uh, yeah how to combine food with uh, beer well in many ways it's very much like combining food with wine but the you know, uh, but the difference is that uh, beer actually has more complementary flavors so you're looking at uh, contrast mostly for wine you have a fruit flavor uh, essentially versus your sausages and your reindeer and your cheese you know, and your, and your salmon. Here we're going to find some flavors that, uh, uh, that actually complement. So if we take our flagship beer, which is a uh, Brooklyn Lager, again, we have uh, our breakfast of champagne. The first thing you'll notice <laughs> is people uh, hear the word lager and they often think that it's going to be uh, yellow in color. Um, 
But lager beer uh, actually is referring to uh, a beer that has a cold fermentation. Mm -hmm. uh, so the lager beer, in this case, is, uh, is amber in color. And the reason why it has an amber color is because the beer has been made from some malts that have been caramelized. And so this caramel flavor uh, that's present in the beer is going to pair up very nicely with, uh, with our sausages. Now, you can see they have uh, uh, nicely browned. If you put them on the grill, you get uh, even more brown. You develop these caramelized flavors. And then those flavors in the beer are going to pick up on that. And, uh, of course, we have bitterness in beer, which uh, provides some uh, cutting power to get through uh, the fat that is hopefully in our sausages, because that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why they taste good. And uh, we have carbonation that gives uh, a nice refreshing quality. So, I don't know. I, I like wine, but wine with sausages... I don't, uh, not not as much as uh, as a, as a fine a fine beer. Okay, so the lager with the sausages, but what about cheese? Because well, that's something we think about with red wine. Yes. Well, cheese actually is one of my favorite types of tastings. Is I do what we call a cheese war. No, it's not really a war. It's a bit of fun. But uh, I do beer versus cheese, uh, uh, beer versus wine rather, with cheese against top sommeliers in several countries, and it's my favorite kind of tasting, mostly because I always win. <laughs> Now, How come now, you do that? Now, yeah, people, people think of wine as the perfect pairing with cheese, but actually, if you read wine books, they'll often tell you that it's quite difficult. Beer is actually a better, uh, a better pairing. And again, it has to do with uh, the harmonies. Now, here we have uh, our, our latest beer, now uh, available uh, uh, here in Finland, uh, Brooklyn American Ale, which is actually a beer that we make. It's the only beer we make specifically for a country. So I hope, uh, I hope in Finland everybody feels very good about this because we make Brooklyn American Ale specifically uh, for the Finnish supermarkets. Okay, wow, I didn't know that. And the reason is that you have the supermarket system that allows only up to 4.5% uh, uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, this would be considered not very strong. Uh, so our regular beer is 5%. Uh, uh, in the United States, so uh, we wanted to make a beer that has a lot of flavor, uh, but uh, but still um, is below our four and a half percent. So Brooklyn American Ale, we use some very flavorful malts, very flavorful hops uh, to give us a big flavor uh, in a beer that's not so concentrated. And with cheeses, uh, you're really picking up on the flavors of the original grass. Uh, and actually, uh, barley is a grass, and you have so these flavors of uh, almost like bread uh, come through. Uh, fruity flavors, because this is a top fermenting beer, or we call it an ale, as opposed to a lager. So you have this very fruity uh, sort of characteristic. And it works nicely with, uh, with our cheeses. Now, I see here we have uh, sort of a bloomy rind goat cheese, which is sort mm -hmm. of a, uh, a brie. Yes. And if you look on, uh, on the outside, you have uh, uh, the mold has formed... Uh, a little bit uh, here of a, uh, uh, of, a, of a rind. And we have uh, bright, tangy sorts of flavors, uh, a lot of salt, and a mm -hmm. lot of fat. So three of, three of our favorite food groups, uh, or two of our favorite food groups, it's quite white because of uh, the goat cheese, uh, the goat milk. Mm -hmm. And these bright sorts of flavors work uh, perfectly well with the hops uh, here. Uh, you're sort of going to bring this out. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of cheeses tend to be very mouth-coating, like the fat lays across your tongue. Mm -hmm. Wine sometimes kind of bounces off. That's true. But having some carbonation helps you out. Uh -huh. Unless, of course, you're drinking champagne. Champagne is not bad with cheese, uh -huh, but okay. uh, rather more expensive than Brooklyn American Ale. So. Uh, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have another goat cheese. Now, this is one that I'm not even familiar with, so I mean, I'm actually going to taste this. You should definitely do yeah, that. Because I'm told it's, uh, it's very good. Now, this is obviously a cooked curd. Uh, sort of goat cheese, so you've uh, taken the curd, you cooked it, it's been pressed. Um, that's very good. Mm. We have one like this uh, at home, we call it Midnight Moon. It's, a, it's almost like a, uh, like a, um, a Gouda type cheese oh, okay, made, yeah. from, uh, you know, made from goat cheese. And if you see this wax, you know, maybe this is quite similar. It's not, uh, it's not very strong. No, it's, no. Uh, but it's bright, it's flavorful, and it's very nice with beer. Oh. <laughs> but is it so that maybe more fatty food is better with beer? Like well, so sometimes fatty food, but of course there are many things that are not so fatty that are nice with beer. You know, even breads and, th and, and things like that. Um, it really depends on what sort of food you're talking about. I mean, for example, you know, your reindeer here mm. is, uh, is very lean. And you can look at it right now and see that it uh, doesn't have so much fat to it. You can see the little bits here and there, but it's a very lean type of meat. Yeah. So... What are we going to pick up on here? Well, 
in a beer like this, now you might look at this and say, well, why is the beer in a champagne bottle? Exactly. But, you know, I will tell you, this is a beer bottle, and it was always a beer bottle, and champagne is in a beer bottle. So really? the whole idea of champagne was to take a, uh, a rather acidic wine from northern France and make it into uh, something that was drinkable. And they would do this by making it sparkling and also by adding some sugar at the end of the process. So here oh. we have used the same technique. It's a good year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, our, our, our same technique that is, uh, that is used to, uh, 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 to make champagne is used here. And so the original beer is filtered. Uh, we mix it with uh, uh, actually a champagne yeast uh, and some extra sugar. And the beer goes into the bottle completely flat and gains all of its carbonation through the re-fermentation in the bottle. And it gives us a beer of great complexity. So this you must pour somewhat carefully. Now the color you're seeing here mm -hmm. is from sugars that have been caramelized. And you have a very complex dry, raisiny sort of uh, character. So, that one's for you. Oh, thank so, you. From the champagne bottle, of course. Now, uh, a thing to keep in mind, this beer is quite strong. It's 9%. <gasps> uh, but you will not be able to tell when you're drinking it, so I'm telling you now, uh, in case you want to do something else this morning besides the show. <laughs> I don't um, know. I will think about that. <laughs> <laughs> and with our, with our reindeer, you're really going to pick up on that almost tangy quality. And, of, and here you also have it smoked. And the smoke and the caramel together Mm -hmm. You know, are okay. like this. Not too hard to kind of uh, to figure it out, but uh, but uh, but taste. Uh, do you recommend to eat first and then drink? Or? Yes, actually, I, I I say drink first and then eat and then you ha and then you and then you have them together. Mm. So uh, you see what they're like separately, and then you see what they're uh, what they're like together. Wow. Yeah, very complex, dark fruit, raisins. Uh, uh, a little bit spicy. Thank you for saying exactly those words I was going to say. But very dry. <laughs> but, very dry. Yeah. Mm. but yeah, uh, you said it was 9%. It doesn't taste at no, all no, you alcoholic, can't, no, you can't which tell. is nice. Yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. why we like to tell people, because uh, you know, they could have a real surprise if uh, they didn't realize that. Now, here, I mean, you can't have uh, meat that's much more lean uh, than this, but you see the flavors together work very good. Very salty. Nicely mm -hmm. smoky, but you'll see how the caramel works with it. Not that it's bad with Brooklyn Lager. There's Surpri nothing wrong with this combination. It's no. really good. Yeah. 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 Uh, breakfast for champions, som Garrett Oliver sa. Och, och det som han också poängterade som ni inte kom med här, men var det att det här saftiga öl, vad kan man säga att det egentligen är? Det är slagprodukt. 